announcement. Huge announcement. We got a roadcaster. Oh my god. We're finally we're finally jet sets. Yeah. Um I think there's a good shot my voice might come out double echoey. But we we th- we're good. Elliot's saying we're good. Right? I think we're good. I don't know if it I comes think we're like, good. I, I, I think I think we're like good. I've said, the editing isn't great. It's yeah. trial and error with this. Yeah. But uh yeah, I got the roadcaster, which means I could add like different sounds and stuff to it, you know. Ooh, yeah. Ed, ooh, our boy Eddie just sent our friend a text over yeah, here. Yeah, Eddie, Eddie just sent a text. So wait, 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 you ready? I'm going to get you right now. You, I'm going to get Ben to laugh. I clipped one of the funniest voice notes from one of my favorite things ever. Okay. And Ben is going to laugh his ass off. Hey, Coco Crane. Oh, <laughs> Freaking friend, I'll mate. Your freaking friend, mate. <laughs> oh my god. Anyways, let's jump into this. Um, so today was uh, Pulp Fiction, right? Pulp Fiction. But up, but up. That was that was great. Get the music. Put the music up. What music? The music they dance to. I don't have that music. Oh, we just get it on the mic? No, we'll get sued for copyright infringement laws. Why? Big, Victory, the podcast, does it all the time. Yeah, but like, I don't know how they get away with that stuff. I honestly have no idea how the podcasting music industry works. Like, how are you allowed to just use music? Are you allowed to use any music to intro for your podcast? That seems to be the case because like everyone else is fucking doing it. Okay, where's the intro? Oh, the audience is waiting. For th- for hours, yeah. I mean, I I would have already pre edited it into our thing. Oh, but you didn't. Not yet. You're gonna. You they're gonna, you, gonna hear you, it you, before because you didn't do your homework. No, because we're recording now. I mean, oh, I oh. will soon record it onto no, here, but and we then... have to hear it so we could like be in tune with it. No. Oh my god. It's like, it's like you don't even trust me. It's like... Ben and Elliot's journey through audio. Yeah, it is pretty funny. I'm not going to lie. It's it's like we're both learning this as we go. Yeah, right. This has been like, what, a couple of weeks into this... No, a few weeks into this podcast and we still haven't really friend, gotten everything down. Friend, friend. Do you want to hear some of the other ones? I have some Pulp Fiction ones. Okay, no, no, no. no but put them up during like the... While like, we're talking? Like, yeah, while we're talking and you feel like there's a moment. Yeah, that, yeah. That like... You know, matches that, you know? That's what I thought we should do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anyways, okay, Pulp Fiction. Let's jump into it. I've seen this movie one trillion times. How about you? This is my fourth or fifth time watching it. Yeah, this has to be maybe my 20th time seeing it. I'm not even joking. Yeah, it's uh, it's a really good film. I there, You know what? You know what I really like about this film? Mm. You get something different out of it every time you watch it. Like, you notice a different... De- this is why mm-hmm. I will not look up, like, a 10 fun facts about, like, Pulp Fiction. No, I, I've i watched top 1 million facts about Pulp Fiction, and I still find different things. Well, like, like, this time, what did I... I screamed out in the middle of the... Right in the beginning, when Vincent goes into the bathroom for the first time. Did nobody point that out in any of them? No one. No one ever pointed it out. I pointed this out, I go... Because that was definitely intentional. Okay, I pointed out something that's huge. And this is, every time Vincent goes to the bathroom, shit goes down. Okay? <laughs> Pun not intended, am I right? Oh am God. I right? <laughs> shit! <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with this kid? <laughs> No, but seriously, every single time Vincent goes to the bathroom, something bad happens. My man went to the bathroom three times during this yes. movie. I usually try not to go once. But he- <laughs> during the <during> movie. <laughs> <laughs> but he went three times. Yeah, yeah. It's like, man, can't you can, like hold your bladder, dude? Every single time you go. Um, So he the first time he goes, G-O-D's. Me, ODs. G-O-D's. Second time he goes, 
non chronologically, he dies. He dies. <laughs> Third time he goes, the place gets robbed <laughs> while he's trying to eat a nice McDonald's. Uh, what was it? It was a and he diner. That book. He has that book with him. He always. I don't know what that book. It's is. like a French book, I think. Yeah, something like that. I think Mia might have told him to read it, but I could be wrong. No, 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 no. She couldn't have. I don't know if he was, was before. I don't know if he was reading it the first time. He was definitely reading it the second and the third time, but. I don't know if he was reading it the first. I don't remember. But what I find interesting, what I find interesting is that it was definitely an intentional choice that every time he went to the bathroom, something bad was going to happen because there's no way someone's writing a movie where the character goes to the bathroom three fucking times Mm -hmm. and like three bad things happen. Like there, there's definitely some like symbolism or like some thematic essence behind that behind that choice, I think. Yeah, for sure. I think it's because it's like almost like the randomness. So I'm looking. I'm looking at the uh, the thing right now because we're we're able to see the quality, and I can definitely tell why we hear an echo and why the audience is definitely going to hear an echo. Why? Because every single time I talk, I hear my voice on. I see my voice levels on your mic. And every time, every time you talk, I see it on my mic. So like, should we switch to one? Should we switch to one? Nah. Okay. It's going to be, so it's not going to sound bad, is it? I hope not. Okay. So we, we should probably it. lower the sensitivity. Wait, wait, wait. Does anyone want to buy a USB mic in exchange for, <laughs> for a stereo mic? No, it's not. It's XLR. XLR. How much did your mic cost? Mine? Uh, this is a what is it? A, it was a it Samson. Took a long, it took a long time to come. Yeah, this one took a while. It was sixty bucks, right? Something like that. It was like sixty bucks. It's not the best mic. I don't think it's uh, yeah. awesome. I need headphones. I'm using my old PlayStation yeah, headphones yeah, that yeah. I got. From, like it's like the cheapest Turtle Beaches you can get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll have the other headphones back soon. No, I don't care about that. I'd rather get you the mic, the US, the the XLR mic. That way we don't have to go through yeah. everything. And then we should probably separate each other more. more. And then, I mean, I mean, uh, hopefully it's not too echoey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we'll, should be fine. We'll listen to this before we, th- we Do you throw want me to move up. a little back? Like move these figures a little bit? I'm um, sure. These are my precious figures. I'm moving. Carelessly, yeah, I was watching. Uh, I was watching the interview last night, and they kept making Lord of the Rings references, and I finally got them. Which interview? The interview, the movie. Yeah, that should be good. And I'm gonna move also. Okay, so I think we fixed the mics. Hopefully, it sounds much better, guys. Um. Okay, what were you we talking about? How's that sound? That's very good. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I think that's good. Okay. Yeah. So we were talking about the bathroom situation. And, and and you know what else is interesting? The bathroom isn't only used by Vincent once. It's used multiple times in the film. The Jerry Seinfeld character is hiding in the bathroom. And for anyone who's wondering who, you know, might have not seen the film, that is there is a character hiding in the bathroom, which is um which looks like Jerry Seinfeld and he tries to shoot Vincent and um Jules. So, and then Uma Thurman does her her first like hit of cocaine. Um, that's cocaine that she does in the bathroom, right? Yeah. So every single time Vincent goes to the bathroom, something bad happens. Like every single time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time he goes to the bathroom, something bad happens. And uh, you know what? I don't think I ever saw that on any single YouTube uh, like video I've ever watched about Pulp Fiction. Which uh, after the like third time I ever saw the movie. I found out that there was a big thing with the box and the whole theory with the box and how there's uh, Marcellus Wallace's soul is in the briefcase. Hey, another in-betweens reference. In-betweeners reference. Will carries around a briefcase everywhere. Maybe it's the same briefcase. Oi. 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 You should have got an oi. No, he's a briefcase wanker. So, hey, Samuel Jackson's a briefcase wanker. Samuel Jackson is indeed a briefcase wanker. Oh, shout out to the Inbetweeners reference that Tarantino did prior to the Inbetweeners coming out. So, that's pretty cool of him. Yeah, 
pretty, pretty cool. Or maybe the guy who made Inbetweeners was copying Tarantino. Yeah, maybe that's what like inspired. He saw Pulp Fiction. He's like, Will needs to be be a briefcase (laughs) wanker. Yeah. (laughs) Maybe Marcellus Wallace's soul is in Will's briefcase. Yeah. By the way, to anyone who doesn't watch the Inbetweeners, this isn't funny. But to anyone who does, this is hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) but to just go back on that like um there's so many theories about what the heck is inside that briefcase it's insane what's in the box it's like the oscar that the that reservoir dogs didn't get yeah it's uh it's like it's like it's it's like oscar reservoir dogs didn't get yeah that's what (laughs) one of them said that's what one of the theories is um it's like um what what's his name says Samuel Jackson what's it what, Jules it's like Jules says uh it's his boss's dirty laundry it's actually some people say it's actually his dirty laundry even though oh here's a big one people say because Tarantino uses the same universe some people say that it was during the the same like week of Reservoir Dogs and it's the jewels that they stole from what happens in Reservoir Dogs in that briefcase, and that's what he's getting. Yeah, they don't show what's in the briefcase in Reservoir Dogs either. It's the same glow, right? Uh, Maybe. I think so. That's funny, because I haven't seen Reservoir Dogs in a long time. I think I've only seen that movie once. So good. Yeah. I liked it the first time I saw it, obviously. Elliot was very upset that Steve Buscemi didn't get the respect he deserved in this film. Well, no, I think it was very funny that in Reservoir Dogs, he complains about not tipping waiters, and then he proceeds to play a waiter in in Pulp Fiction. <laughs> I think that's very funny. Him. He plays uh, Buddy Holly, the waiter Buddy Holly. I think that's what it is. Yeah. This is one of my favorite movies. It's definitely a top five, maybe even top three of my favorite movies. It's definitely a top. It's a, it's a it's a top ten. It's on top ten for me because I have a lot of favorite movies. But it's it it it, it is one of the best made made movies ever. It's so good. It's like it's if I had to describe the plot of Pulp Fiction, it's a, a lot of people say there is no plot. It's a gangsters. Um, what's it called? It's a gangster. It's about a gangster finding his spirituality, essentially. <laughs> no, you're funny, but it is. I think the funny. I feel like the only pure, the only pure um, plot of this whole movie is that Jules is Jules is dead set that there's divine intervention. Yeah. And I think it's a story about unlucky situations. I think every single character in this movie, except for Jules, gets unlucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and you know what another thing is? I mentioned this earlier. I mentioned that like every time I watch it, I learn it gets something different out of it. I feel like every time I watch it, I have a new favorite character. I have a new favorite character. Like who's your favorite character this time? Who is my favorite? Marcel Wallace. Marcel is Wallace? Yeah. Why? I just, his lines just really hit for me this okay, time. Okay, so let's jump into favorite actor. Is that your favorite actor? Yeah, for this time. my The first time was definitely, like, overall, it was probably Samuel Jackson. Like, because that was who, that's who I think is the best performer in the film, right? But Marcel Wallace was, like, this time, like, this run through. Like, I really enjoyed his lines and stuff like that. I thought they were really funny. Yeah, all of a sudden he goes, I'm going to get medieval on his asses. Yeah. And I heard Ben just start cracking up. <laughs> he just goes, he's like, I'm going to get medieval on this motherfucker's ass. That was a good line. <laughs> and I'm just like, fuck. Because <laughs> like medieval is like known for their like brutal torturing methods and stuff like yeah. that. I think that was the point. Yeah, I know, but it's just so <laughs> funny. <laughs> no, but um, uh, it, it it's definitely funny that um, that Marcellus Wallace is wearing a band aid on his head too, and that just goes more into the theory. They say that the back of the soul is in your that the soul is in the back of your head, 
and that's how they that's the reason he was wearing a band-aid there you know that right did you ever hear this theory ben? no i never heard this theory i told you i don't look up any theories for this film because every time what? i watch it i develop my own dude then you have to look up this theory though there's a huge theory about marcellus wallace giving up his soul to the devil and the passcode on the briefcase, guess what it is? 666, I know. There you go. Well, it's actually not confirmed because you only see two sixes. You don't see the third code. Do you? I think you see seven and then he clicks one up and it's six. You see seven and he clicks one up and it's six. But how do you know he didn't click one down? Nah, I think it's 666. And then... um. And then the people that grabbed the, that had the briefcase, those were like the like uh, they work for like the devil or something. I don't know. Now let me ask you, who is your favorite character? Oof, it's a great question. I don't know. It's still Samuel Jackson. It's always gonna be Samuel Jackson <laughs> for me. I think purely because he has the best lines in the whole movie. Like when he's like, "I'm trying, I'm trying real hard." And I'm like, I love this guy. He's so funny. Cool that bitch down. <laughs> cool your bitch down. <laughs> that's a great line. That's, that's, she's nuts. And it's great because I love how in the beginning of the of the the movie starts off where she seems normal. She seems you know, more or less normal and nice to like the waitress. And, I- and then all of a sudden she's like crazy. Yeah, and then she pulls a gun out. Another thing I like, you know what else is cool? Is like how like in sync the conversation is with what's going on in the film. So, for example, like the introduction to Marcel Wallace, right? Mm-hmm. So they give him like this introduction as this like really scary guy who like, you know, threw someone out a four-story window because like, you know. They, a foot rub. Yeah, over a foot rub. But like if you notice, like when they're talking about that, the way they're walking through the hallway Mm-hmm. Going in through the elevator and like all the pauses in the conversation are like perfectly in sync. You know what I'm saying? Explain, explain. So like there's a point where like in the conversation where um where Vega goes to Jules and says and says like, would you give a man a, a foot massage, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and then Jules is like, "Don't fucking do that. Don't fucking do that." Right? And then and then he's like, "I don't want to talk about this. I'm too angry." And then they go to the door. And then Jules looks at his watch. And then he's like, "Okay, we got to we got to wait a couple minutes." And then he goes right back and, into and, it. And and then they walk over. They walk over to the window. And then yeah. he goes right back into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So it's like it's like it's like they're doing the task and the conversation and the task are like in sync with each other. Yeah, he even says uh, right after they're done, they're like, okay, let's get into character. And yeah. then he goes in. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's like, it's, it's, it's really cool to watch, you know? Well, me and you both said this. Tarantino is the best when it comes to dialogue and when it comes to um, just how do you make characters sound genuine and how to make characters real. These characters are real characters. These are conversations real people are having. I was saying this to Ben. When you're in film school, they're teaching you, and and I'm guessing, and he, you know, he agreed with me, that they're teaching you that every single sentence and every single scene has to have a meaning behind it for the film. What Tarantino does is he takes that and he goes, sure, but I want I want to add um I want to add realness to it as well and how he does that and he does that great is he's always he's always what's it called he's always adding that dynamic of realness to his characters and adding a uh he's adding like just normal back and forth conversation that normal people would have like talking about amsterdam and stuff like that is there a point to it probably not i don't think there's a point that Vincent goes to Amsterdam except for the fact that everyone keeps pointing out that he keeps going to Amsterdam. So. I think part of that was because of like uh, like he was like oh yeah I just came back from Amsterdam. I'm drugged up you know like I can know which uh, 
which which drugs are good and which ones are bad cuz like there's this whole idea that like when you that when you buy from a when you buy from a uh, drug dealer when you buy from a drug dealer that basically that basically you can't really tell like the quality of the product because it's you know it's not legally purchased there's no FDA approved there's you know so like he's like it's like I just got back from Amsterdam. Like I could hit this stuff and tell you like the quality of it. You know? Yeah. 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 That was. Um, yeah. yeah that but, was but, but 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 yeah, I get what you're saying. What was your favorite scene? Because that's also something that changes for me. <laughs> I don't know what my favorite scene is. There's so many good scenes. Um. Do you want to go first, or do I have to go first? Because you addressed me. Yeah, I addressed you, and I went for I went first for the um I went first for the other thing. Okay. Um. Oh my god, so many good scenes. Oh shoot. Um. That's a good scene. Shoot. Boop 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 boop. That's what it feels like. You gotta get that soundtrack on. Yeah, like no, no, I got this one. I got this one. I remember asking you a goddamn thing. (laughs) (laughs) I had that one ready. (laughs) Um, my favorite scene. Okay, I might go with this one just for now, and it always changes. Usually during when you know every single time I watch a movie or watch the same movie over. But I think this one really got my got me this time. It's Christopher Walken's monologue. It's such a good I'm monologue. Christopher Walken. Oh yeah, yeah, Ben's making fun of I'm my Christopher impression. Walken. No, no, no. I'm if you're gonna make fun Walken. of me, at least let the audience know, know that I can I do it. Do the impression. All right. I'm the All right, I mean, now you're pushing me to do it. Now you're pushing me to do it. Walken, I'm Ouch, look, you're doing it all wrong, Ben. You know, your dad gave me this watch. He'd be damned to give it up. When General Coolidge, ouch, you know, when I was a kid, I used to love to dance. I danced in high school, ooh, ah, e, I, o, y, and sometimes you, you know, I said that wrong, it's sometimes why. Um, but yeah, that was one of my favorite scenes in the movie because one, it's Christopher Walken and he just comes in to say that monologue and two, it's just a very good shot and it's a very good symbol of what kind of character Butch is and he's one that fights, he's one that fights to the end and so when Marcellus is stuck in the basement, you know, stuck in the basement, um, he knows he has to go back down and get him because that's what he is deep down. He's somebody who needs to, you know, help somebody out who needs that help, and he's not going to let it, you know, just happen. That's what, that. That's why I think that was a great scene and a great shot, and it's definitely one of my favorites. Yo, Shrem, we cool? Yeah, we cool. <laughs> <laughs> under two conditions <laughs> one you get me some snacks and we don't ever talk about this again <laughs> and two I never see you in this town ever again <laughs> my favorite scene is the final scene I think this time yeah yeah that's a good the, scene the, because, because it's 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 such it's okay because it's like a general scene you know what i'm saying like two yeah it's people, probably everyone's choice two, too two, two people take a, to a heist oh in a restaurant right like very random like something that's like super random right and then we watch this guy like talk talk both the robbers out of it you know what i'm saying he doesn't talk him out of it that's the beauty of it. He doesn't even talk them out of robbing. He gives them money. <laughs> he gives them the fucking money. Just not the briefcase. Just not the briefcase. Just not the fucking briefcase. Because you know why? Because he knows if he loses that briefcase, 
he can't leave. Yeah, he can't leave. He yeah. can't leave the world. Once he gives hands over that briefcase, he's like... Well, he that's is. the whole thing. He, he thinks he just saw divine intervention and he wants to get out of being a hitman. Honestly, I think, like, I think... It would be really funny to see a sequel to Pulp Fiction. Oh my god, I wish. I and Jules' story. Yeah, just Jules. Just like what Jules is up to, you know what I'm saying? Wandering the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that'd be amazing. Honestly. Or Jules finds out his fat friend, Vincent Vega, was shot. And he's on a hunt for revenge. For Bruce Willis's character. Die Hard 18. Dun, dun, Avenger dun. Jules. <laughs> we just crossed those together. He found God and lost him right away. In a world where Sam L. Jackson finds God. But then Satan is lurking from behind. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce Willis meets Jules. <laughs> I think we could both agree who our least favorite character is. It stays the same. Least favorite character. Very, very Okay, clear. I know what you're going to say. Clear. Mine is definitely going to come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say it's yours. Very clear. Bruce Willis' wife. Or okay, girlfriend. yes. That and the and the gimp. <laughs> I love the gimp. Shut the fuck up. The gimp is my favorite character. No, you already said your favorite character already. No, but I change it to the gimp. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's weird, Ben. That's weird. I don't know. I don't know. Did you do that screaming part where he's like... Argh! That's so creepy, dude. That, By the way, that freaked me out as a kid, and I will never forget it. Well, that's why you don't put a zipper over your mouth. Dude, that scene is so messed up. It's crazy. I like how they take him out of the crate. That's even, like, more fuck. No, but I like how Tarantino got the shot for that, because it's in between both of them. them and yeah, it's, it's from behind. It's yeah. very creepy, too. Yeah, it's a foreground background. If you really think about it, though, some actor had to be in that crate. Yeah, but I'm sure they had holes and shit like that in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they have to? Yeah, yeah. At the I was, time, I was at giving the, Ben the eyebrows it, just it, now. At the time the film got made, yeah. Oh, for sure? Okay. Um, So, cool, cool little thingy. Kathy Griffin played herself. And I called that, and I was like, how did she play herself in that movie? Is she even in it? She's in it. I told you she's in it. Who is she? I pointed it out. When Marcellus Wallace gets hit by Bruce Willis's car, she's the redhead that's like, I saw everything. If you need a lawyer, I'll do that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nasal gotcha. voice. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, yeah. And when I was looking at the thing, it says um, Kathy Griffin, and then it says herself. So, I guess she played herself, and I was like, was Tarantino ever dating? Was he? I think I am convinced Tarantino put every single girl he ever dated in this one movie. In this one, I'm I'm telling you. Do you agree or disagree, Ben? I mean, he does like foreign women. That that like, there we go. That she would. Oh my God, you're right. The least favorite character in this whole entire movie is her. Oh my God, she bugs me the heck out. Ugh. Like like. You had one job. Yeah, just get bring the, fuck, the, the watch. watch. Just bring the watch. And he said, by the way, he lies there. He goes, yeah, yeah, maybe I didn't explain to you how much I needed the watch. <laughs> and then, and then he gets in the car fuck! and he's like, I told you, I told you. One thing, it, the one thing that you need to get is the watch. It's a watch on the kangaroo. Just get the fucking watch. So good. So funny. Oh, my God. I don't know if I want to eat, you know, blueberry muffin cookie pancakes. Uh, what are you talking about? You know, stop. I want the pot belly. <laughs> what? Tarantino, what is wrong with you, man? But but kind of stay the same. But like, what's wrong with you? But like, don't change. But like, you know, what the heck's wrong with you? <laughs> I want to rub your feet. <laughs> so, Ben, would you rub a man's foot? <laughs> yeah. The question great. is, would you rub his foot? How much Never. Money? How much Never. money? How much money? How much Never. money? How much money? We have a friend who was constantly the- takes his shoes. And was on the podcast. He was on the podcast. He was, so far, I think, the only guest on the podcast yes. as of now. Uh, he constantly takes off his shoes. And he rubs his own feet in public. And... Ben might not find it gross, but I find it 
really disgusting. And uh, I would never rub his feet. Uh, p- besides for the fact that he's had poison ivy on his feet twice. And Ben finds nothing wrong with this. Both of which were on purpose. Both of which were on purpose. Are you for real? Yeah. No way. Yeah. He loves this. Dude, he was just like, one time he was like, I got poison ivy on my foot. And it was sick. He didn't say that. That's gross. Dude, he said that in Deal. You weren't there. He, he said it in Jersey? Yeah, he liked it because he likes the feeling when he puts the, like, apparently the feeling of the itch when you put it in hot water. Like, it has, like, this sort of sensation, which I kind of get, but it's not worth getting poison ivy over. You know what I'm saying? So, it's like the when you scratch a mosquito bite, it feels good yeah, for like yeah, half a second. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, except uh, no, and you shouldn't do that. Yeah, so the first time was definitely an accident, but then the second time he was like, oh, this girl told me that there was this poison ivy, and I'm like, I didn't believe her, so I touched it with my foot. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't believe you. I don't believe you that that's poison. Let me eat it. <laughs> I don't I don't believe that this thing tastes like blueberries. You know? Oh, that's chocolate? I don't believe you. Let me take a bite. I don't believe Chernobyl really happened. I'm going to go there and check it out for myself. <laughs> it gets a third eye, you know? <laughs> My God. You, how long till we could go there? Ch- like, Chernobyl? I, I, I th- like another 40, 50 years, 60? I think people are even allowed to go there now. It's just that um, there are still places where it's like... You should little, watch the show. You're telling me I should watch a show. Yeah. I told you you should watch a show when I watched the show. Oh. I'm the one who told you to watch it. Don't tell me to no, watch Kyle a show. No, Kyle told me to watch it. No, show. no. I watched the show while it was running. Like, yeah, but Kyle I didn't also miss an episode. It. Kyle also did. So don't tell me to watch a show I've already watched. Oh, my God. This, this you should shit. know that. What a bully. Okay. I'm, I'm being bullied. Because like, you should watch a show. Dude, I watched the show already. Don't just assume I didn't watch okay, a show. Okay, okay. Now get up with your fucking trivia. Oh my God, trivia. I don't even need... I don't even need my phone for this trivia. You know who played... Uh, you know who played uh, the drug dealer? Kathy Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Eric Stoltz. Do you know who Eric Stoltz was supposed to play? Who? Marty McFly. Did you know that? Yeah, because you told me in the movie. Did you know that they actually kept the scene of Eric Stoltz in the movie? Um, Back to the Future? Yeah. But is this trivia for Back to the Future? Or is this trivia for Pulp Fiction? Well, it's both. Shut up. <laughs> oh, now all of a sudden you're the righteous one? Oh, keep to the script, Elliot. Keep to the script. <laughs> okay, continue. No, 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 no. Uh, you know, if you don't want me to continue, it's cool. I'll just, you know, just feel sad. Uh, what's more trivia? What is more trivia? Oh, she brings out the cigarettes. Well, what's the cigarette company called again? Red Apple Cigarettes. Ooh. Red Apple Cigarettes. That is actually a Tarantino um, Easter egg right there. As well as uh, Big Kahuna Burger. Big Kahuna Burger. May I take a bite of your delicious Big Kahuna burger? Another fun fact that you actually pointed out in the movie was that um, Uma Thurman, the yes, the, yes. The, the character, so the, her character auditions for something in the Fox Force 5, which is the gang from Kill Bill. So people say that, like, and this film came out before Kill Bill. So people say that, you know, that this, like she was auditioning for her character in Kill Bill. That was supposed to be like this TV show. Almost. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. By the way, uh, to go back to the uh, Back to the Future thing. Hello? Anybody home? Hey, think with fly thing. <laughs> <laughs> I he forgot. just wants an excuse to press his button. I forgot I had that button there. <laughs> wait, wait. Do you have any like personal recordings of like inside joke stuff? Uh, I have this one. This one you're gonna love. You're gonna okay. love it. I love that one. I love that one. That's my new favorite button. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd like that one. Okay, okay. I'm I have one more from Pulp Fiction. Like you, like this one. Please would be nice. 
<laughs> so pretty please with a cherry on top. <laughs> that was a great one. Yeah. Okay, more trivia. What? More trivia. Oh, um, you're coming in very low. Yeah, a little bit. Oh, I think I accidentally... How's that? How's that? Yeah, much better. Okay. So um, more trivia. Um, ooh, here's another one. Um, Bruce Willis, when he's looking for a weapon, goes from a hammer to a baseball bat to a chainsaw and ends it with... A katana. Same as... Kill Bill. Kill Bill. This movie only costs $8 million to make. The initial budget was reportedly even lower until Bruce Willis was added to the cast. Five million went to pay the actors and actresses' salary. The film was already profitable when it w- when its worldwide rights were sold for eleven million. It went on to gross over two hundred million in the box office. Is that not insane? When Bruce Willis was added at the end, six cents. Hmm. No, nothing. Yeah, that is pretty crazy. That is insane. Uh, yeah, Steve Buscemi, I said that one. Steve Buscemi played the waiter, right? Yeah. The Buddy Holly waiter. Yeah. A lot of people didn't know that. Every day people come and close are going faster than... Um, Uma Thurman did not actually like the song that was played in the Jack Rabbit Slim's Twist concert. Um, and she told Quentin Tarantino about this, saying it just did not sound right. Tarantino simply replied, trust me, it's perfect. <laughs> Trust me, it's perfect. I think I went to pot belly. <laughs> I think I went to pot belly. Because when men have a pot belly, it doesn't look good. But when a girl has a pot belly, it looks very good. Very good. Because her features are small, but she like likes it to the touch. I'm like, what are you talking about? Why is this in the movie? Tarantino, I love you. Keep doing what you're doing, but that was really unnecessary. Yeah. But don't change a thing, Tarantino. Keep things like that in the movie, but like at the same time... Pot belly. Pot belly, you know? Pot belly. <laughs> oh, the F-bomb is used 265 times. <laughs> the, which wallet? The wallet that says motherfucker. <laughs> no, bad, bad. He goes, one bad, no, it's just bad mother effer. No curse, no curse. Okay. Harvey Keitel convinced his friend Bruce Willis to take part in the film, knowing that Willis had been a big fan of Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, the green one. Best friends forever and ever. (laughs) <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Quentin Tarantino hesitated over the choice Between the character he was going to play Jimmy or Lance Oh Lance is the drug dealer He was played by Eric Stoltz Hello Anybody home Hey Think with fly Think <laughs> He ended up choosing Jimmy's role Because he wanted to be behind the camera In Mia's overdose scene mm. Interesting Oh, because he wanted to be in the camera. Yep. Because he's in love with Uma Thurman. I love you, Uma Thurman. I love you. <laughs> I don't think he's in love. I don't know. Did he ever date her? No, but he's in love with Uma Thurman. <laughs> it's very clear. As a film student, how do you know this? He keeps casting her. <laughs> he, he, he like He's like obsessed with her. Like just the shots he gets of her. You could tell this man has very much respect for her beauty. Okay. You do you. Um, Bruce Willis worked on the film for only 18 days. That's crazy. 18 days. Wow. That's wild. And how much airtime was he on it for? He has his own like little short thing. What is that, like 30 minutes? Yeah. 18 days for 30 minutes they probably, of it. They of it. probably pumped it out. Like That's really, insane. Yeah, like really, really intense filmmaking. This was one of the first movies to use the internet for advertising. That's cool. That's really cool. 
Jules' bad motherfucker wallet belonged to Quentin Tarantino. The inscript on the wallet is a reference to the theme song of Shaft. Sam L. Jackson, Jules, plays the title character in Shaft and Shaft. Okay, there was there were two movies of that. Tarantino wrote the character of Winston, the wolf, specifically for Harvey Keitel. The parts of Honey Bunny and Pumpkin were written specifically for Amanda Plummer and Tim Roth. Calm down, Honey Bunny. Calm down. Tell the bitch to calm down. Tell the bitch to calm down. Calm down, Honey Bunny. Calm down, bitch. Calm down. <laughs> you gotta get that as a soundboard thing. Yeah, we do. We should. Okay. Ben, I got a question. Do you think there was divine intervention? Do I think there was divine intervention? Or do I think it was just a coincidence that he missed? Yes. Answer the question, Ben. Ooh, this is this is a tough one because like cuz like it, it it's not whether I personally believe it or not, right? It's whether it exists in the universe of the film, right? My question to you is, yeah, it's do whether- you think it was divine intervention? Yeah. Yes? I think it has to do with the briefcase. Why? No, I think it's the briefcase. I don't think it's divine intervention. So you do think that Marcellus Wallace's soul is in the briefcase? I think there's something up with the briefcase. Ooh, what do you think is up with the briefcase? Oh, my God. Um... I don't know. I just think like it it brings good luck because like, you know, like they have when they have the briefcase, they're almost like, you know, protected in a way and like everything goes well. And then when they give it away, except for the guy getting shot in the head. Yeah, but he didn't have the briefcase. I guess so. I mean, in the end of the day, you can make a good point that Sam L. Jackson's character learned something and because of it is saved in the end of the day because Vincent's character dies. Uh, Marcellus Wallace, we're not going to say what happened to him on here, but it's pretty messed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marcellus Wallace. That's definitely one of the darker things that happens. Um, yeah, Bruce Willis almost. Bruce Willis, but really nothing bad happens to Bruce Willis all that much. Yeah, no. Actually. He's good, he's good. I mean, almost happens is different than happened. <laughs> um... Uh, and then a lot of characters, a lot of characters, a lot of plots, a lot of characters. What are, you, what are your final thoughts? Final thoughts on this film. This film will go down and always be remembered as one of the greatest films of all time because it's just, it's a film that's about everything, but at the same time, almost in like the way about like, almost like about Seinfeld, but it's also at the same time about nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, no, it's a good point. Yeah, it's a show about nothing. Yeah, it's this is a movie about nothing, but at the same time, it's about something. Well, that's the thing. I do think that there's something to learn from anything. I always say this that, like, you could take the dumbest person in the world and just say, okay, there's something to gain from this person, knowledge wise. Yeah. And I do think that Tarantino is trying to say, hey, let me take a movie. We'll chop it up into different pieces, unchronologic, non-chronologically. And it's really, let's take a film about nothing and try to just like see if there's a meaning behind it. Which, personally, I do think you can find a good meaning from this movie. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I do think so. Uh, its rewatchability is uh, at an all-time high. Yeah. You could rewatch this movie maybe one million billion times. 100%, 100%. It's definitely one of the movies I've seen the most by a landslide. Um, and it's one of my favorite movies. Yeah. I think so. Uh, anyways, that has been the Shrem Show with Ben and Elliot. And uh, don't forget to like, share us. And don't be a bloody briefcase wanker. Yeah, unless you're Samuel Jackson. Yeah. In that you, case, you could you, you could definitely you pull, pull off being in briefcase. Yeah. I don't remember asking you a goddamn thing. I love that. I love that. That's a great line. Anyways, guys.
Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Give us five stars. Follow us. I'm, at, I'm Elliot at Elliot Trem on Instagram. And Ben's at... At Benji Fallon. I got to use the toilet. Great. Anyways, I'm off of keto. Because... Uh, Lack of stress. You, you just think of pointing that out because you just edited the trailer. And we yeah. It, out it, you. It, you know, yeah. by the way, so I edited the trailer so well because you said that like... So, okay. So that whole one, two minute and 40 second clip two minute and 49 seconds um that was like a seven minute clip that i edited out because you just rambled on so you would just go like you would say something and then you would say like random things that none of them would ever get like inside jokes like brandon like that, exactly that. And I'm probably going to keep that in because why not? Okay. Oh, <laughs> We're waiting for a movie to Bobby watch. Bobby Morton. Bobby Morton. For the eighth season in a row. Bobby Morton. Honest to God, how many episodes was Bobby Morton on SNL for? Bobby Morton. Brandon Boy. Brandon Boy. Keenan Thompson. <laughs> Featuring. <laughs> Featuring. Andy Sandberg. <laughs> Guest starring Elliot Schramm. <laughs>